Welcome back, everybody. It is so good to see you all again. My name is John Magnoski. I'm an architectural and fine art photographer. And like so many Capture One users, I was waiting with bated breath for the new release of Capture One 22 so that I could play with the HDR and panoramic stitching tools. So super excited about these new tools and I wanted to show them to you. And I've been working on this video and I just have to be bluntly honest with everybody. I cannot even pretend like I'm excited about this anymore. Um, but before I get into that, let me tell you a quick story. Back in uh, the spring, I believe, I was contacted by Capture One to set up a time and do a Zoom call with one of their UX designers, uh, specifically focused on the HDR merging tool, um, mainly because I do manual blends. And if you look at any of my other tutorials, you'll see that I use Capture One and Affinity Photo uh, to blend all of my interior photos and my exterior photos um, manually. I do that because I get the greatest level of control. Some of my feedback to them was that, you know, it, it's good to have some, you know, control over the image um, and that the, the image has to be outputted in a very realistic sense. And so some of the samples that they showed me had me super excited. I was thinking this, this tool is gonna get me my proof images to my clients so much faster. When the program was finally released just the other day, I couldn't wait. I mean, I downloaded it right away. I put other work aside and I started playing with the HDR merge tool. And I have to say, I was shocked at how simple the tool became compared to what I was shown. Um, instead of any sort of interface, it's literally like a merge to HDR and then merge. Um, you can choose auto settings or other things. In fact, I'll show you real quick. Now this is the default workspace within Capture One 21. I am not a fan of having all of my tools on the left and my thumbnails on the right. I am a right tool person. So I've created my own workspace. I call it JMP 22. And if you're interested, I do have a link to my workspace in the description below. Feel free, download it, plug it right in. That way your workspace will be set up just like mine. Now the tool is incredibly simple. As I was saying, you simply grab all of your uh, images that you'd like to merge. You can either right click and choose merge to HDR. You can go up into image merge to HDR. And this is your tool palette. No longer do you see a preview. No longer do you have any sort of parameters. It is basically just, you choose auto adjust or auto align or not. And so here we click on merge. And when you do that, depending on the size files that you're working with, the number of files, I haven't tested on anything more than five. Um, so for me on my M1 Max uh, fully loaded MacBook Pro, this took literally like 15, maybe 20 seconds. Um, when it's done though, it, it spits out a DNG file that you can edit just like a raw file. And overall, it did a very good job of pulling in the highlights in the window here, you know, the, the reflections on the floor and keeping the foreground uh, nice and bright. And then I can go in and, you know, just lighten everything up. You can see that it already did some adjustments. It pulled the highlights down and so on. So I can boost the shadows, pull everything in. And overall, it's not bad. I mean, I was pretty excited when I saw that until I got into the details. Let me show you, I'm gonna zoom in here and mm, do you see this? I don't know why it's artifacting like this. And I thought, oh, this must be a fluke. And so I tried it on multiple images uh, from the same shoot. Now I'm shooting with a GFX 100S and uh, every time there was this harsh light coming in through a window, it would do this. And I thought, well, God, that's no good. I, 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 need, I need HDR for this very reason in my workflow. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, maybe it's the camera. Maybe it's having a hard time with this particular sensor. So I tried it on some of my older files with the 50S. Same issue under the same circumstances. I thought, okay, that's incredibly disappointing because I know that Lightroom can do it and I don't get this artifacting. And then I discovered that, and this is really weird, I can't apply any Fujifilm film simulation profiles to the file before the merge 
or after the merge. They'll show up inside the dropdown, but they don't do anything. That's that's a huge disappointment. Um, I use the film profiles all the time as like a base recipe, if you will. Um, it's my starting point for how I want the image to look. And when I do an HDR merge in Capture One, I, I can't use those anymore. So that kind of throws my workflow off. Um, however, I know in Lightroom, I can. I can apply those after I've created an HDR merge. And then I thought, well, maybe I can get more control over the image if I do some preliminary work to the file before merging. None of that matters either. You know, if I change white balance or anything like that, none of that carries over when I do the merge. So I'm missing that granular control that I thought we were gonna see. Uh, knowing that it's Capture One, they give you all sorts of control over all of your file data and yeah, not so much in the HDR merge. So what's disappointing for me is this is not going to save me any time and my workflow still stands. Uh, there is a link in the description below and up in the card above on how I do my blending manually using Capture One and Affinity Photo and I'm still gonna have to do it that way. This HDR merge does not cut the mustard for me. You think with what I can do with my phone, my phone, in one shot, I would be able to get with something like this and a powerful program, the M1 Max processor, like all that. You think you would get something even better using computational photography than what they're giving us. And you're still left with having to manually blend things in. And so, you know, artifacting aside, which is what I'm seeing in my images, um, even if those artifacts weren't there, it's giving me an image which is no different than what I could see in Adobe Lightroom. And okay, great guys, you've matched Adobe Lightroom. They've had this feature for years. It was time for you to pass them and you didn't. And I know that they're a small company. I get it. They have limited resources compared to the juggernaut that is Adobe. And I know I'm coming down really hard, um, but yeah, the HDR merge, I'm not, I'm not loving it. And I think, I don't think it's ready. I actually don't think it's ready yet. I think they're gonna end up updating this. Um, you're gonna see a lot more people probably complaining about it. Um, I, I doubt I'll be the only one. Should you upgrade if you're on version 20 or version 21? Unless you absolutely necessarily need simple HDR or you know a good panoramic stitching? I don't think so. I think there's other options out there that are far, far better. And it really breaks my heart to say that as somebody who supports Capture One, really is rooting for them. Um, you know, I'm a user, I, I use their program. I, I used to be an affiliate and um, I always tell people Capture One, it's still, it does, it's true. It gives you the best image quality from a raw file. Their raw processing engine is the best that's out there in my experience. But there's so many pieces that are missing. And if you're looking for a nice, easy, cohesive workflow, this really isn't it. Um, as I said in my other video where, you know, I'm doing the, the manual blending and everything, if you're a real estate photographer or you're looking for more of an automated uh, type of process to create your HDRs, this isn't it. And it still isn't it, sadly. So with that said, again, Capture One is still a very capable program, um, but their new HDR tool is not what I had hoped or expected. And uh, I really, really do hope that they work hard to improve the, um, the quality of these files. I will be sending my images off to Capture One so they can see the artifacting that I'm getting. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I kind of rambled on and I kind of came down hard. But what do you think of the new tools? Are you are you happy with them? Did I miss something? Did I make a mistake? Um, I would like to know because, yeah, I am not I'm not a happy camper right now, and kind of feel like at this moment maybe the grass is greener. I've looked at Lightroom. I've been playing with it all year. Their their improvements are impressive. Um, They've kind of reached a level where they're matching Capture One with some of the features. Uh, but then if you're looking at stuff like HDR merge and panoramic stitching and then pano HDR merge stitching 
combination they have it in spades and it works well with every camera that I've ever tested so anyway I hope you like this video. I hope it didn't make you too depressed or anything like that. Appreciate you spending your time with me. I will have more videos coming out. And uh, until next time, God bless. Please click on the links and uh, check out my other stuff. Have a great day.